Hey fellow travelers, it's Mickey Gold. And today I'd like to address forgiveness. Now I know we did Honoponopono. I know we did an affirmation video on forgiveness and I know we did a subliminal affirmation video on forgiveness. However, today we're just gonna touch on our parents just a little bit or any adult that was significant in our lives. Now this is not a major video on trauma. This is a video more so on those things, those beliefs that we have inside when our parents or somebody in authority told us we didn't look right or we couldn't or we shouldn't. So we're gonna address those things. Parents are a little easier on some of this because we have their history. We know what they look like as little kids. We might kind of understand some of their issues because we know our grandparents. So after the intro, we're gonna get right to it. All right, see you then. Welcome back, fellow travelers. Hope you enjoyed the intro. I actually really do. It was kind of fun to have that made and it kind of makes me smile every time I look at it. Uh, so thank you for coming back. Now, the other reason we're addressing forgiveness is because it's still Mercury in retrograde. So I don't remember if you watched the Mercury in retrograde video or not, but if you did, we talked about the fact that it's time to kind of clear things up because we're not moving forward with new stuff quite yet we are still working on some old stuff. So what better things to do than to kind of release some old stuff. Now, again, this is not about major trauma. If you have major trauma, seeing a psychotherapist is always a good idea. Um, getting help in any way that you see fit, maybe seeing a pastor or some sort of counselor. There's a couple things that uh, for the bigger trauma, like for instance, a simple thing like writing a letter. You don't have to send this letter, but really just getting all that stuff out, getting your rage, your anger, yell, cuss, scream on paper and just let it go, let it fly. And of course you can burn it so you can, you know, rip it up. You can float it in water. You can do whatever you like to do with this. Um, but the thing is to just get it out, get out as much stuff as you can. Another thing that you can do is there's a woman called Byron Katie who wrote a book, uh, the work about the work and her website is thework.com. Uh, and that's again, Byron Katie, the work.com. And she has you fill out worksheets on people and situations. And it's actually amazing. You might do that and not have any need for any of this stuff that we're talking about today. However, if you do those things and you still feel a little bit like, oh, this is for you. So, and again, these things are ideas. These are just things that I found to help me along the way. And when I studied hypnotherapy and when I studied NLP, little tips and tools, and I watch a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, I watch uh, Ralph Smart, Infinite Waters, and Aaron Dougherty, and they address some of this stuff too. So this is just my little take on that. And uh, one of the things that you need to remember is that hurt people hurt people. So if people have been hurt in the past, they'll hurt other people. And some of the things that might have hurt us the deepest are things that the person, your parent, might not even remember they said or did. And sometimes that hurts really bad. You know, you're like, but you told me this or that. And they were like stressed out and they were driving the car and they were just made some offhanded comment. But you know, when your three-year-old mind or five-year-old mind or whatever it was, that stuck with us for a really long time. And this can mess with our self-esteem. It could have been something about our looks. You know, one of our parents might have kind of more of that teasing personality and we're more sensitive. And, you know, the other thing is too, it depends on where you are and your family hierarchy. You know, if you're the oldest sibling, parents are usually younger at that point and they're new. They're trying to figure this out. They have their own pain, their own hurts, their own insecurities, and they're young. And they make huge mistakes. By the time they get to the youngest kid, it's like, eh. You know, they've got it down. They're not worried about it. You hear parents talk about by the time they're on the third child, it's like, whatever. 
So, you know, it kind of depends on what your other siblings were like, what the dynamic was in the house, how happy your parents' marriage was. That makes a huge deal, you know, if your parents were still together. I mean, depending on your age group, it might not even be normal for your parents to still be together. You know, you might be dealing with mom and stepdad or dad and stepmom whatever it is, or wife number three, or eight, or 12, or, I mean, everybody's different. And so again, it's hurt people hurt people. And different personality types don't always understand each other. My mother and I have completely different personality types. She's the type that would like to stay in her room and not deal with people and doesn't have any problem not being active, where I'm like, oh, it's sunny, let's go outside, let's go play, let's go do something, ah, you know, go, go, go. And I enjoy people and things and, you know, so I got lots of gripes as a young child about the fact that I was so active. As a matter of fact, my grandmother, when she was younger, was a school teacher. And so I got dropped off quite a bit at my grandmother's house during spring break and during winter vacation and a lot of summer vacation because my mom just couldn't deal with me because I was so hyper and I wanted to go do stuff. And my grandmother was the perfect person to go do stuff. She's great for when you wanna go, go, go. However, when it comes to feelings and different things like that, not so much. So I can kind of see where my mom and my grandmother didn't click. And so my mom might have not gotten everything she needed from her mother. And my grandfather, it was an alcoholic and she my mom tells a story my mom's birthday is on christmas she tells a story about one year she asked her father to give up drinking for her birthday that if he loved her he'd give up drinking for her birthday so she my grandfather of course being in the grips of addiction could not give up drinking he actually was drinking till the day he died pretty much um so she didn't understand that you know, addiction doesn't mean someone doesn't love you. So, I mean, there's all different dynamics going on. So your parents might have an addiction. Your parents are dealing with their own demons. They're dealing with their parents. They're dealing with their parents' trauma. They're dealing with all sorts of things. And so that's one thing to understand. So being able to go back and take a step back and look at your family, look at your mom, look at your dad, whoever, whichever one you wanna deal with first and look at their mother and then look at their father and look at their personalities and look at what you think your parent might have needed and did the mom or the dad fulfill that not looking at them as grandma and grandpa but really just take the person the personality out of it take your personal beliefs out of it and look at it from an independent place where if you were looking at someone else's family you'd see of course they're unhappy so look at that. So this is why I say this is great to do with your parents or, you know, an uncle or an aunt or an older family member who you might have an issue with. This is perfect. So look at that dynamic. What's going on? And did they get what they needed? What did they say? I spent a lot of time with my mom and my grandma, you know, together. And so I could see some of the stuff that where my mom didn't get what she needed. And I can see with her father where she didn't get what she needed. So these are things to remember. And the other thing too is if our parents are busy, if our parents worked, especially if our moms worked, if they worked, they were stressed out about A, B, or C, and they snap some weird comment at you, again, they might not even remember this. And this is not to let them off the hook, you know. But the thing is to remember is that holding on to these things only hurt us there's that old saying holding on to a coal burning coal only hurts you you know that's anger is like holding on to a burning coal it's just hurting you you know this is, and, and it can hurt them too because you're not having a great relationship with them so that said kind of dig into their history look take that step back and look at what was going on you know, because sometimes we're so into it and we're so deep into it that we don't see those things. You know, we can see this from, like I said, an external view. You can be looking at someone else's family going, oh yeah, that's why they have issues. So take that look. 
Now, the other thing that you can do is go look at pictures. Look at pictures. It's really easy to see what was going on. I mean, if your parents have little kid pictures and they're really serious, you know, if they were unhappy, how are they going to give you what they don't have? You know, I mean, that's something else to remember. How are they going to give you what they don't have? And as we get to the next generation, there's stuff at your fingertips that your parents and your grandparents didn't have. You can look anything up on Google. Our parents and our grandparents, depending on your age, didn't have that. They didn't have any answer you could think of at their fingertips. They were doing the very best they can. And that's the other thing to remember. Your parents, whether you believe it or not, were doing the very best that you can. They could. You know, they, again, can only do what they can do. You know, they can only do so much. They're a human being. So remembering that they're a human being. So I want you to go and dig up some pictures. Look at your family. Look as far back as you can. Notice, like, is everybody smiling and happy? Or do they look really serious and sad? And look at, too, what happened during the Depression? You know, where was your family? Look at the family members that were alive during the Depression. Think about the stories. If you have people alive in your family, ask them to tell you stories. Ask them to explain to you what their life was like growing up. Because the more you can understand, and again, you might be in a position where your parents are gone and everybody who's older is gone. So that this might not work as well for you. Now, once we kind of have that, and once you, I want you to get a picture of your parents. And if you don't, if there's some reason you don't have a picture of your parent, just kind of imagine them younger because they probably kind of look like you a little bit or you and your sibling or, you know, just kind of imagine them about toddler age. And so this is where we're going to start an exercise. We are going to shrink our parents back. We're going to close our eyes. So you can close your eyes. You don't have to watch me anymore. Go ahead and close your eyes. And I want you to imagine your parents, one of them, you can do them both different times or an authority figure or whatever it is that you want to release some stuff with and I want you to bring yourself bring them back to a point where they were like really cute little chubby cheeks and you know toddler age where they can walk and they can talk somewhat you know enough to tell you things um, and I want you to imagine these little chubby face cute little things crying and I want you to imagine you sitting there looking at their little chubby cheeks with the tears running down it, crying because something they might have told you a story or you might know a story of some hurt they endured as a little kid. And I want you to imagine their little chubby face crying and I want you to go over there and pick them up. And I want you to go ahead and put them in your lap. And I want you to give them a great big hug. And I want you to tell them that you love them and tell them it's gonna be all right. Tell them, just take a few minutes and tell them the things that you as a toddler or a little kiddo would have liked to hear. You can, you know, just tell them that you love them. You can pat their head. You can do whatever you need to do. You know, just take a few minutes, breathe. And again, this is just a little example. So if you need to, you can take as long as you need. And you can do this as many times as you need. And just tell them everything you'd want, again, to hear as a kid. And just let them know they're safe. Let them know that it's going to be all right. Let them know that you're there for them. Because maybe they didn't have somebody there for them their whole life. And then once you've calmed them down, once, you know, maybe they've giggled and, you know, you kind of fluffed up their hair a little bit and, you know, give them a kiss on the top of the head, whatever it is you need to do. I want you to put them beside you and I want you to hold their hands and I want you to grow them up. You know, you can grow them up to whatever age you want and if you need to stop at certain ages and kind of give them feedback because you might know the trauma of your parents. 
You might know at a certain age that they lost a sibling or they lost their parents early or they missed their big break, whatever it is, you know, give them encouragement, give them love throughout. And then once you get them to the age they are currently or before they passed, look them in the eye, tell them that you love them and release those things, release whatever you can, whatever comes up, release it. Let them know you understand and let them know they did the best they could. And it, it might take a while before this feels comfortable. It might not feel comfortable at all. You might have to do a lot of work before you get to that point. But again, this is just a little short exercise. And again, take as long as you want to do this. This is just, this is how we do it. All right. So go ahead and you can open your eyes. So again, this might not come immediately and this might bring you lots of relief. It might bring you no relief. Um, and again, take as long as you need to do this without me jabbering on it's because you need to have your own experience. And then what we're going to do is we are going to once again, close our eyes and we are going to see the little chubby faced version of us. Now you would know when the first trauma hits, like a little, you know, like nothing again, major, this is not major PTSD trauma work. I want you just to imagine a scenario that something happened and you don't feel loved and you got tears rolling down your little chubby cheeks. And I want you to pick that little angel up and hold them in your arms. And again, tell them all the things you would love to hear because this is you. Let them know it's going to be okay. Let them know what an awesome adult you've turned into. Let them know everything you'd want them to know. You know, soothe them. Let them know the things that, and do the things that you wish your parents would have done. And then once you've got them calmed down, once you both feel that love, sit them next to you, hold their hand. And again, you know where your hurts are. So again, grow them up. And each time you hit a spot that you know there was trauma or there was something that you would have loved to have some wonderful wise being talking to you, and maybe your parent wasn't the person that could do this, wants you to do that for you until you've reached the age where you are currently, you know, and then look in your own eyes and let them know, let yourself know how grateful you are, how much you love them, and then promise them that you'll always be there for them, that you'll never hurt them again, that you'll always be there to protect them. And when you are ready, you can go ahead and open your eyes. And again, do this, take as long as you need. Um, because sometimes these things take a lot of work. Sometimes we feel like I've done it. I've conquered it. I'm awesome. And then you do something and you're crying and you don't know why. And then you remember oh, this and you can do this again. I just read a book that was about healing and it kind of brought up a few things for myself and you realize you're never done. You know, as long as we're here on the planet, we're never done. And I'm grateful for these I'm never done moments because of the fact that it gives me something to talk to you guys about. And, um, and I'm grateful for that because I enjoy this very much and I hope this helps you and I hope this finds you in love, light, and peace. Namaste, my friend.